Today we're going to talk about how to construct the head. We've already touched on it a little bit by drawing an oval, finding our center line, and establishing eye level. So let's draw a head directly from the front. Let's draw an oval. Let's start here. Going this way. There's our oval. Now, what's the proportion of the oval? Uh, you want about one to three fourths. So you're thinking about an egg shape, not an almond, not uh, an avocado. The avocados are supposed to be slightly egg shaped. All right, so that's gonna be step one. Step two, if the figure is looking directly from the front, you wanna draw your center line running perfectly straight like this. That's step two. Step three, find your eye level. On most people, eye level will run at about the middle of the features. Now, I accidentally placed it a little bit higher. That's okay. On most people, actually, it does run a little bit higher. So step one, draw an oval. Step two, find the center line. Step three, find eye level. Where your center line intersects your eye level is something I call the anchor point. That's a triangle spot where you usually hold your glasses, the bridge of the nose. And that triangle is going to lead to the brow line, which is going to look like this. Now, brow lines will vary, uh, but I like to think of it as an M that somebody has stepped on. So imagine an M walking around, minding its own business, and then somebody came along and squished it and turned it into something that looks like this. Now, the brow line starts with this little triangle, runs at a slight angle up, and then starts tilting back down to your eye level. This part represents the forehead. This shift in angle represents the transition from the forehead into the angle of the temple. All right, so now we've established another very, very important line. This is called the brow line. Now that we have the brow line established, we can find the base of the nose and the line of the mouth. So if we take the distance from the brow line to the chin and find the middle, That'll give us a pretty good indication of where to place the nose. And then, if we take the line of the nose to the chin and find the middle of that, that'll give us a pretty good indication of where to place the mouth. Now you can see that we already have something that looks kind of like a head. This is the architecture upon which the likeness of the head is going to be based on. Now right now we're dealing with average proportions. But when we try to get a likeness, we want to make sure that this setup is exactly right or exactly represents what's in front of us because if the initial architecture is wrong, no amount of finessing the curve of the nostril or the shape of the lip is going to get us to a likeness because that likeness is sitting on the wrong substructure. All right, so let's start sketching out the nose and the mouth. So our nose is going to look like this, let's say. It's going to run this way. We know that the tip of the nose is going to line up with this line here, the nostrils too. Though they might drop down a little tiny bit. And then here is the lip. Upper lip, lower lip. I made my center line a little bit crooked. But you can see that the middle of the lip lines up with our center line. Here's the chin going this way. All right, now that we have the nose, the mouth, our brow line, now we can start placing the eyes. Now eye placement can be really tricky, but a couple of rules to keep in mind. First of all, in general, the eyeball, the distance from one side of the eye to the other is about one fifth the width of the head. So if we measure out one fifth increments, we'll have a pretty good idea of how big to make the eyes. Okay, so right now we've got five eyeballs, one eyeball in between the eyes, and then one eyeball from the corner of the eye to the edge of the head. So here's one eye. And then here is our other eye. That's just one, way of, <coughs> just one way of getting the eyes right. Uh, here are a couple other little tricks. Where the nostril ends, the eyes begin. So if we draw a vertical alignment from the corner of the nostril 
to the corner of the eye, we'll find that the tear duct usually lines up with that spot. That's number one. Number two, if we draw an angle from this point, the base of the nose and the center line, to our brow line, you can see that it lines up with the corners of our eyes. So just one other way of getting where the eye starts and where the eye ends. Now mostly this is useful from a limited number of angles, but we can still use it in a number of different ways. Okay, now that we've got the eyes, the mouth, the nose, the facial features in front, we can start carving into the head a little bit because usually the skull at the temple is a little bit narrower. The cheekbone comes out a little bit, going this way, going this way, and then obviously depending on the person, the cheek, the chin starts narrowing, tapering a little bit, going that way. Now we can find the placement of the ears. Uh, this varies quite a lot. Uh, so this really is dependent on lots of things, including age. So old people have slightly longer ears, uh, ears being one of the few things that continues growing on the face, uh, other than the nose. The nose also grows with age. Uh, but usually, uh, the top of the nose lines up with the brow line, and the earlobe lines up with the base of the nose. So here is the ear, going this way, going this way that. Okay, uh, now we can get the hair. Give them a slightly messier hairdo. There we go. Uh, we can put in facial hair, whatever it is. Right, uh, start shading. All that kind of stuff. Um, what else do I want to say? Again, these are average features. Uh, they're not even classical features. Uh, they're just kind of average features. Um, will they guarantee a likeness? No, absolutely not. They will not guarantee a likeness. In order to get a likeness, we need to adjust these lines very carefully. But they will keep you from making horrible mistakes like placing an eyeball in the wrong place or too close uh, because this is now more like Kermit the Frog or a hippopotamus than a human being. So uh, it's going to keep us Making our heads human, will it give us likeness? No, it will not. But uh, this is a really important start in getting the proportions of the head right. In the next tutorial, we're going to talk about profile view, when the head is facing directly to the side. So this is front view. And in the next tutorial, we're going to deal with profile view. All right, uh, one of the advantages of my system is that regardless of the rotation of the head, you're gonna start off by trying exactly the same shape, an oval. So in this case, let's see if we can draw the oval approximately the same size here, like this. Uh, we're, looking with a, we're looking at a head that is facing this way. You're gonna start off with the same oval. Let's see if we can keep the portions more or less the same. There's our oval. Where are we going to place the neck? We're going to place it not at the bottom. It's not like a string hanging off a balloon here. We're dealing with the spine that grows from the back of the head. Now, we've drawn an oval. The next step is to draw a center line. Up until now, I've been telling you guys that the center line curves all the way along the contour of the balloon. I'm sorry, but I was lying to you. Because the center line is like a string hanging off a balloon. Imagine a string glued to the top of the balloon it's going to curve, it's going to follow the contour of the balloon in the upper half, and then in the lower half, gravity takes over and it's going to run perfectly straight and end at the base of the balloon. This is really, really important to keep in mind. Once again, like a string hanging off, hanging off a balloon, it curves in the upper half, lower half hangs straight. Why is that important? Because it forms a jawline. Without it, here's an oval, here is our center line, Here's eye level, and then imagine trying to draw a person following these guidelines. That's going to be somebody, I'm assuming that there are some people who look like this, but uh, that's a pretty strange looking person. If we draw the center line hanging straight, we're gonna give this person a strong jaw. This is why the center line hangs straight. All right, we found our center line. Now let's find eye level. Uh, I'm gonna drop it down just a little bit. Last time I placed it a little bit high. Now we're going to start drawing our anchor point. 
anchor point goes up and then turns into the brow line. So now we're going to draw half an M going this way and then running this way. We're going to pull it about a third of the way in to our oval. That's about as far as we need to take it. Um, it might be a little bit longer, it might be a little bit shorter, but right now I just think about a third here. Now that we've established the brow line, we're going to take the distance, measure it down to the chin, find the halfway point. That's going to give us a good indication of where the base of the nose is. Now we're going to take this distance, run it down to the chin. That's going to give us a very good indication of where the line of the mouth is. Now we can start indicating our nose, our lips. Let's start drawing the nose. Now notice that the nostrils are set back a little bit behind my center line. And when I draw the lips, I'm going to push them a little bit further in front of the center line. This is really, really important because if I don't do this, if I draw the lips behind the center line, that's going to look quite odd. So here is my person with lips that are completely inside the center line. Now, again, there are people who look like this, uh, people with very thin lips or people that are missing their teeth, right? Uh, because usually the lips push forward a little bit. How much? Obviously depends on the person. There's some people that have very prominent jaw lines or teeth that protrude quite a lot. Um, right now, we're just going to push it at about the middle of this distance here, the middle of the nose. All right, and then we're going to return back to the chin, which still is going to sit on our center line. Okay, now that we have the front of the face drawn, we can start placing the eyes. We can start placing the eyes. So, uh, where the nostril ends, the eyes begin, like this. We're going to talk about how to draw individual features in a second, but for right now we're just going to place the eye like this. All right, so far we've only dealt with the front of the face. Now it's time to deal with the front of the face, the front of the oval here. Now it's time to deal with the back because we're missing a big chunk of this person's head. You see how I've drawn this person back here, right? His head is too flat. Usually when you draw a head from the side, whatever distance I have up and down, I'm going to have the dis same distance back here. So the skull, if we draw a skull, has a proportion that is one and one. So the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here. Let's do that. We're going to add a little bit of cranium. So that's an additional curve that ends right here like this. So this is about two thirds the distance of our oval this way. So usually this part here, the occipital bone, this is the bottom, the base of the skull here, lines up at the two third line, which is usually the top of the upper lip. All right, now we can indicate the neck. and put in the last feature when dealing with the head from the side, the jaw, that last two features, uh, the jaw and the ear. The jawline is actually quite easy to find. If we take the distance of the head from one side to the other and find the middle, this way, that'll give us a very good indication of where to place the chin. And then we know that the ear sits on the jawline, starting at the top of the brow and running to the base of the nose. Here is our ear in profile view. The head in profile view is pretty easy. Uh, not a lot of foreshortening like there is with the head on the front. Um, really no difficulty at all. Uh, this is just about the easiest viewpoint if you're not trying to capture a likeness because trying to capture a likeness in profile view can be difficult. It requires a lot more subtlety than having to deal with the head from the front. 
so those of you guys that think, ah, I'll just draw somebody in profile view, it'll be a cinch. Yeah, it'll be a cinch to get something that looks like, like it's human. Uh, very hard to capture a likeness in profile view. Okay, so in the next tutorial, we're going to deal with what I consider to be the most difficult view, the three-quarter view. All right, when we're drawing the head from the front, we draw an oval. When we draw the head from the side, we draw an oval. When we draw the head in three-quarter view, we also draw an oval. So let's make them all the same size. Here is a head in three-quarter view. Now, the next step is fairly complicated. We need to find our center line. It was easy when you're drawing the head straight on. We just find a straight line, run it through the middle. It was relatively easy in profile view. We just want to make sure that the line curves in the upper half, lower half hath hangs straight. In three-quarter view, it's a little bit more difficult. So let's think about it. If in our center, center view, our front view, the line runs straight like this, and if in profile view it follows the contour along the side, where would it be in three-quarter view? Well, it'll still start at the center here, and then it'll run in between the center point here and the contour here. It's still going to be like a string hanging off a balloon, however. So it's going to curve in the upper half like this. And then at the halfway point, it's going to run perfectly straight like this. Figuring out exactly where eye level is, excuse me, center line is in three-quarter view can be challenging because really three-quarter view could be anything from somebody looking almost towards you, but not quite. So something that looks like this or somebody is just a little tiny bit off axis. This is still considered three quarter view. Or it could be almost profile view, but not quite. So somebody who is looking away from you, but, oh, wait a second, I can still see a little bit of the back eye. That is also considered three quarter view. So depending on the rotation, the center line will vary quite a lot, and this is something that takes practice. Develop an instinct for placing your center line. But with enough repetition, it becomes no big deal at all. Next step, same as the first two angles. You're going to find your eye level. In this case, it's going to run perfectly straight, like this. Now that you have your anchor point, you're going to start drawing a little triangle that represents the bridge of the nose and drawing your brow line. Now, the brow line also becomes a little bit tricky because not only do we have a flattened M that's been flattened on top, we have an M that's been kicked in on one side. Poor M, it's been really abused. So it's gonna look like this. It's gonna be flat on one side, and then on this side, as it's wrapping around the skull, we're gonna see something like this. Sometimes, depending on the rotation, we might not be able to see this angle at all. So we're going to have to gauge exactly what its shape is. But in this case, we're going to end the brow line at about two thirds the width of my oval, right? So this is about a third, right? You guys see that, right? This is about a third. This is about a third, right? Just a general rule, uh, the width, shape, position, height of the brow line will vary. But for right now, just run it to the two-third line on the oval. Okay, now that we've established our brow line, now we can take this distance through this distance, divide it in half. That's going to be the base of our nose. Take the distance from the base of the nose to the chin, divide it in half. That's the line of the mouth. Now that we have these increments, we can start indicating the shape of the nose. Now notice that the nose is a wedge shape. It starts on the center line, but the tip of the nose starts sloping forward and it's gonna push past the center line. So the tip of the nose is gonna run somewhere here like this. 
and then our nostril is going to sit behind our eye level, behind, excuse me, behind our center line. So here's our nose. Now when we place the lips, we're going to push the middle of the lips a little bit off our center line, just a little bit. Why? Because you notice that here, the lips push forward. They push a little bit past the center line. They will in three-quarter view. Not as much, but they'll still do it. Now, how do I figure out exactly where to place it? Well, it depends on the person. It depends how prominent their lips are. Uh, but usually it's a little bit off, not quite as far as the tip of the nose, right? The tip of the nose usually leads, right? You, everyone enters the room with their nose first, mostly. Um, okay, so here is the chin. Now that we have our frame, it becomes a lot easier to plop in our eyeballs. What's the rule? Well, where the nostril ends, the eye begins. That's very, very helpful, right? And then we can start placing our eyes. Now on this side, it can be tricky because we can't see the nostril. You can't see it, but usually in perfect three quarter view, the tear duct is gonna line up somewhere here like this. So here are our eyes in three quarter view. Now, we're gonna be able to measure this kind of stuff. So all of this is going to become measurable once we're actually dealing with a person in front of us. This is mostly useful for, again, just maintaining the very basics of proportion, making sure that our person is symmetrical, human. Uh, it's not gonna give us a likeness, but it's gonna keep us from veering off the road and again, placing eyes way up here. Okay, we still haven't dealt with the back of the head. We've only dealt with the front of the head. Let's deal with the back of the head a little bit. This could be a little bit tricky. Uh, we need to figure out where the cranium ends, how far it extends. Now, it's not gonna extend as far as it would in profile view, but usually the distance from here to right about here is the same as the distance from the side of the head to the back of the head. So what is that? That's probably five-sixths, right? It's, not, it's more than three-fourths, about five-sixths of the head. Uh, that's usually the proportion I use. On most people, depending on how receding their hairline is, this is usually the hairline. So I'm gonna take this distance right here, again, about five-sixths, carry it over, and that's gonna give us a pretty good indication of where to place the cranium, like that. Now, we've got the cranium, we can draw the neck. Where is the jawline? Well, a good indicator of jawline is the distance from here to the brow. Usually on most people, the distance from the brow to the chin is about the same as from the side of the face to the jawline. Now, this will vary depending on the rotation. So obviously, the more somebody's rotated, the more of the cranium you can see, the wider this distance is, right? Uh, however, this distance is pretty consistent. The distance from the chin to the brow, it'll also change a little bit. It'll also change a little bit depending on how much, how much of the jaw you'll be able to see. Um, but right now we're dealing with perfect three-quarter view. Uh, once we start drawing, we're going to have somebody in front of us. We're going to use our proportion measuring tool to figure all that stuff out. All right. Here's the top of the ear. And here is the bottom of the ear, lines up with the base of the nose. Here is our ear in three-quarter view. Three-quarter view can be pretty challenging. Uh, getting the nose to project forward setting the setting the proportions correctly, making sure the thing's symmetrical. However, uh, this is the optimal view for portraiture. Uh, you will see portraits from front view, uh, religious portraiture, iconography, sometimes on coins. <laughs> you might see profile view. However, uh, three-quarter view, even though it's the hardest, is the optimal angle because it gives you the strongest sense of three-dimensionality. It shows the forms of the head in a much more clear way than the other two angles. So we're gonna practice our three-quarter view a lot. 
this is going to be the most important angle to get really good at. The other two will follow as well. All right, so that is head construction from three different angles. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to talk about what happens to the facial features under different rotations.